Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Heroes and Bosses. This time I'm going to be painting the Orc Abomination from Green Horde. I'm starting this miniature off by spraying it with Chaos Black Primer, then using Corax White from above at a 45 degree angle. Next I'm going to paint the inside of the mouth and gums. I use this mix a lot, a flesh tone mixed with a bit of Screamer Pink, but I think it works great for the inside of a mouth. So this is Cardic Flesh from P3, but any flesh tone will do the trick. I'm also using this mix on the gums and lower lip. Don't worry about going overboard here. It's the first color, so just slap it on there. Next, I'm painting the skirt, or the robe, hanging from the orc's waist. I'm just going with pure Abaddon Black for this. Now you may have noticed some black patches of paint here and there. That's because there were places that the black spray primer missed and I had to go back and use a brush on primer. Now it's time to take advantage of the two-tone prime. This dude is mostly skin, so I'm going to spend most of my time painting that. I'm first picking two different skin tones. The first one is Battle Dress Green by P3, and the second is going to be the same color but mixed with a bit of black. Now you can't really see it from this angle, but the abomination is black from the midpoint on the back down to the waist. So I'm going to start off by painting all of the black parts with the dark skin tone. So I'm just continuing this pattern, finding all the parts of the skin that are black and painting them. By doing this, I'm setting up the shadowed areas, and later, when I use a wash, these are the areas that I'm not going to highlight afterwards. So looking at the miniature from above, it doesn't look like much has changed, but when you turn them upside down, you see all the shadowed places that got painted. Now I'm switching to the pure battle dress green and I'm going to paint the remainder of the skin. I'm not worried about the harsh looking lines between the light and the dark colors. These will be fixed later. For now, I'm just covering the rest of the orc skin. This part is a bit boring to watch so I'll speed it up for you, but I wanted to show the areas where the light meets the dark and also the areas that I'll be focusing on in the blending stage coming up next. Once I'm happy that all the skin is covered in a good layer or two of paint, I'm going to go back to the battle dress green and I'm going to mix in a good amount of water to turn it into a glaze. Now I'm going back to all those spots where the dark and light skin tones meet each other, like this one on the left leg. Using the glaze made from the battle dress green, I'm going to start my brush a small way on the dark skin and brush towards the light skin. This is going to make a smoother transition from the light to dark and mask the harsh line between these two colors. Then I'm just going to repeat this process, finding all the most obvious spots where the light and the dark skin meet, and then use the glaze to blend one color into the other. Okay, now that that's done, I'm going to put the rest of the base colors onto the orc. I'm starting with Balthasar Gold, and I'm using this on the metal discs hanging from his belt and for all the piercings that the orc has. Next, I'm using Ushabdi Bone for all the bony protrusions through the skin.
I can't tell if this is some kind of bone armor or if the orc's own spine has extended out of its skin, but I'm painting this as well. There are four skulls and two severed heads hanging from the belt. The skulls are getting a couple layers of the Ushavdi bone. And finally, I'm painting all of the fingernail and toenails. The two severed heads are being painted with cardic flesh. The head hanging from the belt has a beard, and for this I'm using Mornfang Brown. I forgot a few bits of bone here on the right shoulder. There's three bone piercings that are also being painted with Ushabdi bone. The armor, the skulls, and the heads are all held on with straps. I'm using Mornfang Brown for these. You may need to get creative with some of the straps, as they aren't particularly well defined. I left some of the skulls alone until I got wash on them, just so I could see where the other straps should be painted. Next I'm doing the shoulder armor, and I'm starting off with Rhinox Hide. For the edge around the shoulder pad, I'm using Steel Legion Drab. And I'm using the same color on the foot wraps. The last big thing to paint on this guy is all the metal plates strapped to his body. I'm using a dark metallic for this, P3's Pig Iron. So with the helmet again, you need to be a bit creative, especially around the eye sockets and nose. After I was done painting the helmet, I went back and dabbed some dark green skin tone into the eye sockets and the upper lip. And of course, you can't forget the metal spikes on the shoulder armor. The final base color is for the teeth. I'm using Vallejo's Ivory, though any near white color will do. There aren't any defined upper teeth for this miniature, so we're just going to pretend they are there and paint a line of white along the gum line. I made a few jagged edges to simulate some canine teeth, but you get a pretty small space to work with. So here's what we have so far. All of the base colors are on, and it's time to do some shading. Here are all the washes that I'll be using, though you don't absolutely need to have all of these. You can get away with just using a black and a brown wash. However, I'm starting off using a Thonian camo shade for all of the skin. This is a greenish brown wash and it's going to help blend together the dark and the light skin tone even further. In fact, once this wash is on, you could get away without doing any highlights since you already have some pretty decent shadows going on. Next I'm using Agrax Earth Shade for everything that's been painted with brown or bone. So I'm starting off with the shoulder armor and the foot wraps, then I'm doing all the straps and the beard on the severed head. Next, I'm doing all the bones and the fingers and toenails. For the skulls, you could keep using the Agrax Earth Shade, but I switched to Agrax Earth Shade Gloss, simply because I wanted some slightly darker shadows in the eye sockets. Here, I've switched to Reikland Flesh Shade for the two severed heads. I'm also using the flesh shade for the inside of the orc's mouth and the gums. For all the metal plates, I'm going with Nuln Oil. I'm also using this in the brass colored areas.
And the last wash is Sarah from Sepia. I'm going to use this to yellow the teeth and add a bit extra near the gums. With all the washes finished and dried, it's time to start the highlights. Most of this miniature is only going to get one simple layer of highlight, and as I said, the skin is already pretty cool looking the way it is. However, I am going to give it a bit of attention since it makes up about 70% of the model. So as you can see, I've already started the bone areas. I'm doing a single layer of dry brush using Screaming Skull, so a slightly brighter bone color. I'm using a flat brush. This is actually called the Army Painter Dry Brush. The flat edge is going to help me get some of the harder to reach spots without hitting any of the skin. Next I'm doing the trim around the shoulder armor with a one to one mix of the original Steel Legion Drab with a bit of Baylor Brown mixed in. You could also add any of the bone colors instead, anything that's going to brighten it up a bit. I'm just making small stripes onto the armor and making sure not to hit any of the deep grooves. I'm using this same mix on the leg wraps, focusing mostly on the upper edges of the wraps. For all the metal areas, I'm only doing an edge highlight using plate mail steel, which is a slightly brighter metallic than pig iron. I'm also putting an edge highlight on the metal spikes on the shoulder armor. When highlighting the helmet, I'm going to focus on the area around the eyes and the top of the helmet. If you get a little too carried away, you can always add more black wash to tone things down again. Okay, next I'm doing the skin, and for this I'm creating two very thin mixtures of paint. The first is just going to be the original skin tone, Battle Dress Green, and the second color is going to be brightened up a bit with a lighter green. I'm going to be using Ogren Camo for this. So I'm starting off with the Battle Dress Green, and just like before, I'm brushing away from darker areas. This first layer is going to clean up the stain left behind by the wash, and I'm only doing this on the areas that were originally painted with the lighter skin tone. The darker regions of skin are getting no highlights. Now in some places this is going to look really bright, but the paint is thinned down and when it dries it's going to darken significantly. So now I'm doing the same thing with a brighter green color, but focusing on the upper third of each muscle. I'm only adding one to two layers of each of these green colors. Next I'm doing the black skirt. So to start off, I'm painting the upturned folds of the skirt with Skaven Blight Dinge. I'm not trying to make this look perfect yet, I'm just marking out where the highlights are going to be. It's hard to see on camera, but these folds are pretty rough looking, and that's okay for now. So just like I did for the skin, I'm mixing some water in with the Skaven Blight Dinge until it's a glaze consistency. Then brushing from the dark to the light area, I'm using this glaze to blend the two tones together. Final highlight for the skirt, I'm mixing in a lighter grey. This one is Filthy Suit from Army Painter. Then I'll do the same thing again, but just near the top edge of each fold. The rest of this mini is just small touch-ups and highlights. For the brass areas, I'm mixing in a bit of glorious gold with my Balthazar gold. Then I'm doing an edge highlight on all the piercings and the brass discs. For 
the severed heads, I'm reapplying the cardiac flesh, but only on the tops of the heads, the noses, and the cheekbones. One of these skulls has a flaw in it, so I'm covering that up by making it look like there's a leather strap across the face, and maybe that's what it's supposed to be anyway. Next I'm doing the eyes, and these eyes are not actually defined at all on this mini, so I'm just putting two points of Evil Sun Scarlet, followed by smaller points of Wild Rider Red on top of that. It may be hard to see in the video since the eye sockets seem to be tilted downward a bit. For the teeth, I'm just reapplying the ivory color near the tips. For the skulls, just like with the severed heads, I'm focusing on the tops of the skulls and cheekbones. I'm doing this once again with the Ushabdi bone. I need some dry blood for the severed heads, so I'm going to mix up my own. First I'm putting down some Mephiston Red and Mornfang Brown, and then mixing those two together. This is going to be my bright dry blood color. Next I'm putting down a dark green. This is Angel Green from Army Painter, and I'm going to mix a bit of this into the blood. This color is going to be my dark dry blood. I'm going to take these two colors, starting with the dark dry blood, and put spatter marks on the faces of the severed heads. I'm also going to spread some around to the things they are touching. Once I'm happy with the level of gore, I'm going to use these two colors as war paint on the orc, just putting random lines on his body. I'm starting with the dark blood, then tracing down the center of it with a lighter blood color. I'm also putting two stripes down the face of the helmet. The orc is nearly done, so it's time to paint the base. I'm doing this in an identical fashion to my massive Darkness Minis, so for more detail on how this is done, you can check out the first couple videos in that playlist. Here is the quick and dirty, however. I first cover the base in Mechanicus Standard Grey, then draw out some flagstone patterns with a pure black. Next I mix some lighter greys and browns into the Mechanicus Standard Grey and paint random flagstones. I then follow the whole thing up by painting the rim with a dark, nearly black grey. Let the whole thing dry and then spray it with Tester's Dull Coat. As a final touch, I wanted to add some fresh blood, so I'm using Blood for the Blood God mixed with a bit of water just to make it easier to work with. I'm putting a few splashes inside the mouth, on the hands, the ground, and a bit more on the severed heads. And here is the finished abomination. A special thank you to all my patrons for supporting the creation of these videos. I have a lot of new miniatures and board games coming in and I'd love your input as to which miniatures should be painted next. If you want to join our painting community, check out Heroes and Bosses on Patreon. Once again, thank you very much for watching.